Thanks for joining us here on Real Estate Jerky. I'm your host, Ed Parco, president of Lending for a Living, along with Marlene Chaplin, my trusty sidekick and co-host. We're on the road and keeping things real and relevant throughout Stanislaus, San Joaquin, Merced counties, and into the foothills. And also, you know, Tuolumne and Calaveras, I think occasionally. <laughs> our engineer, you know, our studios, wherever our Wi-Fi connection and our fabulous engineer is available, and that's Mike Murray, and the incredible radio signal of iHeartMedia and the station KFIV. We always bring you something to chew on here at Real Estate Jerky. The topic of the day always revolves around real estate and investing in our communities from many different aspects. If you have any questions, please text or call me at 209-404-1915. And like I always say, don't be a weird that I actually answer that phone. Or you can email us at Radio Real Estate Jerky and Marlene and get right back to you. Marlene, what's going on? Yeah, uh, Ed, I'm reading this bill you sent me, um, AB 1771, <laughs> called, ha, it's another one of those freaking bald-faced lying BS bills. Yep. It's called the California Housing Speculation Act, or they're also calling it the um, California Flip Tax. And they're basically uh, penalizing, making it dirty house flippers. Oh, we're going to get that money back from those dirty house flippers. That's the way they're making it sound. Right. But the dirty house flippers are the only ones revamping the smaller houses that they can actually turn in for the average person to be able to buy these days. And that's what they, you know, that we're not building, they're not building first time home buyer houses, right? They're not building those houses. They're building middle of the road houses because they can't afford to build any other houses. But that's not even what this tax is. That is not even what I this bill that. is. It's, it's that, that is what they're family, positioning it. Safe Neighborhoods Act kind of it's thing. It's exactly that. It's exactly that. They lie I read up. through it. Yeah, they, they read the, the title. They set it up to where people won't read the bill and it's about bad things. But this is going to mess everybody. You're going to be. I know, but Ed, it was almost years. like you sent this to me just to get me worked up so I could spend the, the last 48 hours pissed off. <laughs> well, no, when I text you, I left out a word. I realized later when I looked at it and said, hey, we should talk about this on the show. I missed part of those, I think, those words in there. And you called me right about, what the heck is this? And I'm like, I just saw I it on even, Facebook. I know. That was, thanks for cleaning up my language. It's just, it's, I just can't. They just keep doing it because they're, they've been successful. So people, Ed always says voting has consequences. Stop voting headlines. Stop voting personalities. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. They're going to call this the California flip tax. They're going to make it sound, they are making it sound like those rich, nasty flippers are going to pay what they deserve. Uh, no, no. Yeah. They already pay what they deserve. They no, pay they're going to make them. This is everybody. I know. But when they sell the house and I know, but when they right now, when they sell that house within the first year, they got to pay the state a, uh, a third of the stupid tax for doing that in the first place. It's so dumb. It's ridiculous. Yeah, already. this is a tax over the top. This is to get everybody of, else who buys a house, lives in it for a couple of years. Guess what? You can't. If you don't wait for seven years, you're going to pay taxes. Oh, yeah, that taxes. stupid ass scale thing. They came no, up the whole with. thing they what? want to do is since they can't do Prop 13, 13. get rid of Prop yep. 13, yep. this is a roundabout way to actually Same get thing. those taxes. And, yep. you know, won't we stop giving this money that we don't, the surplus that we have in California, give it back to the people who paid it. Stop causing more taxes so you can pay for all these stupid programs that nobody wants, except for the politicians who are in the up there in Sacramento who don't know anything or don't know um, that, you know, they, they, they just do what they, <laughs> they want. Don't. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't know. They don't know. That's a proven fact. They don't know. Most of the people that we have in Sacramento right now have never bought a house. They haven't, they haven't, they well, haven't doesn't bought Josh a house. Harder own a house? <laughs> I dare say he actually, I get, I get, I, I search, you know, when we have people on, I try to search because I can look at public records. I try to find pe where people live because, you know, I want people in my district to be in my district and live in my district. I know you don't have to, you know, you can be outside, but I want my people to live in my district just so they know who I am and support us. And we've had a few candidates on who live in the district, live in not the best part of town, 
and like Joel li- Campos. Yeah, I love yeah. that. They live where they 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 want to support and make better. Then you have these people who say, "I'm a farmer." Because I put on coveralls <laughs> and I've seen hay before. That makes me a farmer. That doesn't make you a farmer. Did you like load hay on a back of a truck and haul it in to feed the animals? No. And speaking of farmers, you know, this whole thing that's going on with their, you know, fighting, saying that I know you need, we need to go to break, but um, fighting for the fact that inflation and they're saying the, that the beef industry is now taking advantage of us because they're trying to gouge us stop it Dude, the farm the guy that's making those feeding those animals they're getting pinched and they're not making the money most of these farmers are going to go away that do these cattle yeah. i'm sorry you're listening to real bit. it's all right you're listening to real estate jerky here on power talk 1360 kfiv with our host ed parko mba veteran mortgage advisor president of lending for living and uh, reverse mortgages. We're going to talk a little bit about those because they're still amazing. And we're, you know, we're talking about this stupid real estate bill that they're out there talking about gouging. So if you want to reach out to Ed, 209-404-1915 or lendingforliving.com or email us at radio at realestatejerky.com. Okay, let's go back. Um, so let's go back yeah. to that stupider bill. <laughs> it is a stupid, it is, it is. I, I read your word that you put a stupider I was like, stupider, stupid is, stupider, stupider, stupider. Yeah. Well, here's the ad, insult to injury on top of everything else. That's a lie about this bill. They're also put in there that, that the money that they raise is going to go for affordable housing. Guess what? No, it's no, not. It's, not. it's well, not. Well, it's probably their term of affordable housing is to get homeless uh. people into hotels. Who the heck knows? Oh what it's my God. Affordable housing. We know how to, you know, how you get affordable housing. We need to build more housing in California so that the values don't go up as fast as they're going up. We're going, I just saw the numbers. We're up 20% last month. Again, year over year. We can't keep sustaining this. We will get to a point when California where 65 to 70% of Californians have to rent. And that's why one in four new houses that are being built are going for rentals. I know, but how do we fix it? So how we fix it? Because people don't understand. They don't understand there is a fix. There is a resolution. There is a way to fix it. There Build is. More houses. Yes, it's simple. And stop. Less, regu- make- less regulations. Freaking Sounds every so house well. does not need sprinklers. Jeez. Or all this other stupid Well, it's crazy- not even that. I don't care if they have sprinklers so that they burn, that one goes away, doesn't burn the rest of it. The issue is the fact that it takes 20 years in California to build a housing track. Hmm. Let's get that down to a year. Come on. That's how you fix this. Make it six months, like in other states. Get all these people out of the way. Let's get this done. Let's get some more houses built. Well, talking, it's, but you got to vote. You got to vote right. You got to get to know these candidates. We're not only voting, but you got to vote right. Like you just said, right. Not <laughs> you right. Vote right. You go, You don't vote left. You got to vote right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, good one. <laughs> good you got to read what you're voting for. Know what you're voting for. If you don't know what you're voting for, don't check that box. Yes or no. Call just it. Vote. Just Call don't. It. No, you're better off not checking Texas. a box if you don't understand what you're voting for. Because yeah. if you check the wrong box, it could come back and bite you just like this well, gas tax has. The gas tax, Prop 47. Safe, safe neighborhoods. Safe I know neighborhoods. you guys keep calling it Prop 47. You need to say what this it was. One, they lied to us. The, say neighborhoods. This one's called California Flip Tax or Speculation Act as though these are flipping. Ugh. It's bad. Now I'm going to start using puns. Use a pun. Oh, go to jail. You know. And <laughs> luckily we can get into who we're talking to today about commercial insurance. I know. Well, stuff. here's another thing. Business insurance, insurance period. Um, oh my gosh. The insurance rates. Um, not only that, if they keep doing what they're doing in California, businesses, there won't be any businesses here. Mm. You don't have to give them commercial insurance. You'll have to leave to go to someplace other state and give them commercial insurance because there will be no businesses left. Just Are you a business owner? Just places to eat. Yeah, hey, yeah. Well, there won't be any food to eat either because farmers won't be able to stay here either. Nope. Uh, what are they thinking? You know what it is? It's evil, evil. And what is don't evil? Care. True. They just care about lining evil, their pockets. That's all. True they care about. evil wants to destroy. It's self-destructive. That's true evil. Are you a business owner? 
or thinking of starting your own business on that happy note. Actually, that's how one of the other ways you fight to give California, get it golden and get it back. Well, then you're going to want to stay with us if you are starting your own business or you own your own business, because we're going to talk to one of our favorite friends, John Tyson, commercial insurance agent at Omega Pacific Insurance, about how COVID's affected commercial insurance, ways to save money. Yep, that's true. You can. And some really good advice for small business and big biz, too. So if you have questions, and we really hope you do, please dial Ed at 209-404-1915. That's 209 209- 404-1915. Ed Parco, that's Ed. He's our host. He's an MBA, a veteran of the U.S. Navy, and a mortgage expert and president of Lending for Living. And you know the best part? Ed cares deeply um, about helping make our communities the best places to live in California. And if that's what you want to, then keep listening right here to Real Estate Jerky on Power Talk 1360 KFIV. We'll be right back. You can change the way you live out the rest of your life with our new reverse mortgage products from Lending for Living. Our loan limits are the highest available. Call us today at 209-846-9270 or visit LendingForLiving.com. Welcome back. I'm Marlene Champlin, sidekick to our amazing host, Ed Parco, here at Real Estate Turkey on Power Talk 1360 KFIV, where we always give you something to chew on. Questions or comments for Ed, just dial 209 404-1915. That's 209-404-1915. Or visit LendingForLiving.com. Now let's get to our guest and one of my favorite people on the planet, John Tyson, commercial insurance agent with Omega Pacific Insurance. Hello, John. Hello, Marlene. You're too nice to me. Hello, Ed. Hello, that's because I'll be mean later. That's right. There you go. There you go. Are we still good there with those with those numbers coming through there, Mike? Um, John, thank you for joining us today. I have two questions. First of all, um, how many years you've been in the insurance business, and how did you get into it? I've been in 21 years, and I got into it when a recruiter reached out to me and said, "Hey, would you like to consult with business owners?" And I said, yes, that's right up my alley. Let's go. What's it all about? So that was my start. Recruiter, like out of college? Uh, no, actually, I was working for Enterprise Car Rental down in uh, Turlock and Modesto here. And, and uh, I left that place and, and the recruiter found me. Well, because a lot, I mean, bring up Enterprise. A lot of people go there, start their career and then go somewhere else. It's amazing how many people go mm-hmm. elsewhere from. And I'm not saying that they, it's just like a great stepping stone for people to understand business. It's like the army. We did more before 9 a.m. than most people did all day. <laughs> Good training. <laughs> yes, I can there. Thank you. All right. I'm being told by our engineer. I'm not loud enough. All right. Let's get into everything that we want to talk about. Was there anything you want to get into, Marlene, before I get anything? No, go for it. I mean, right. I'm, so, just, I'm just, you know, we were here. before the show, we were kind of talking about COVID and how good and bad things came out of COVID. Uh, we won't get into all the other political stuff we were talking about, but, um, Hartford Insurance, you know, refunded some restaurants money, Mercury Insurance refunded some premiums. What else was going on during that period of time with your business? Yeah, that, well, obviously there was a scare. What's going to happen? It was a lot of unknowns and, and business owners were contacting me. Hey, what do I do with my workers? What do I do with this? What do I do with that? And we, we had to measure it and just kind of stay calm and give them the advice. And the agents would get the advice from the insurance companies. We'd talk to the small business owners in town. And then oftentimes they'd call me up. Hey, John, you know, what do I do? I got a guy who's sick. How do I handle it? Well, let me find out. Let me find out what's changed and what's the new regulations and whatnot. Um, so it was, it was a time of um, uncertainty uh, out there in the marketplace. But uh, as you mentioned, uh, Hartford gave some refunds. Hanover was another insurance, of, uh, insurance company that I dealt with who uh, reached out to some of their restaurants and said, you guys aren't making the revenue. Let's give you back some premiums. And um, Mercury Insurance did it on the auto because people stopped driving, as we all know, at the start of COVID. And so uh, the premiums are there to pay the claims, but the claims weren't happening. So, so it, you know, we made it through it. It was a transition with the uncertainty, but we definitely made it through it. All right. So anything, ama- anything amazing came out of COVID for you guys in your industry or just? We got busy. <laughs> I was busier than I ever was. And I'll admit, uh, you know, sales were up. Uh, you and I talked a little bit earlier, the contractors, I deal with a lot of contractors. I deal with a lot of wholesalers in the building material industry. Business was good. People were repairing their homes and uh, modifying buildings and I was busy. So uh, I'm grateful for that. Personally, I'm grateful. Yeah. I think being stuck at home, you figured out there was a lot of stuff that you needed to do your house. Now you were there all day long. 
Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's another interesting thing. Uh, the, the movement to home, uh, things change. People are different from home. Uh, yeah, we were, I was remodeling my home left and right. My wife was actually. I was staying in there working, watching her have all the fun. But uh, people that used to be like at the office and get back to you right away were working from homes. And sometimes they didn't get back to you as quick as they used to. So that was a little bit of a, a little bit of a change. Well, you know, it kind of interrupted their Netflix. So, you know, get back to you. I heard a lot of dogs barking in meetings. I'll admit to that. I've never heard so many dogs barking in my life as I did working from home on COVID. Well, when we started, when you know, at March, what was that? March of 20, we had to move to home for the radio show. And that was a huge difference because we had to figure out how to do it from not the studio. And then you, that's why we say you, you're going to hear dogs barking. You're going to hear certain things because that's just where we are right now. And, the, you know, and, and since then, you know, I built out two studios in my office because it's a totally different environment for us working. And plus we use it a lot for other lives and other things that we do. So, you know, a lot of great stuff's come out of it. There's some bad stuff, but um, let's keep going about the business. Oh, Go ahead, you're Marlon. listening to real estate jerky here on power talk, 1360 KFIV. And our guest, John Tyson, commercial lines insurance agent with Omega Pacific Insurance. You can reach out to John at 209-338-5500. Yep, super easy number, 209-338-5500. Or you can visit John at trustomega.com. And if you'd like to talk to our host, Ed Parco, about some uh, mortgage or real estate issues, you can reach out to him at 209-404-1915. That's 209-404-1915 or at lendingforliving.com. You can email us both at radio at realestatejerky.com. Um, John, commercial lines insurance. So did so all these people working from home, did it spawn some uh, folks that decided to work for themselves? Did that happen much? Uh, business owners or yes. insurance people? Yes. Business owners? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, Probably more of that. I think, uh, yeah, there was some more of that. I just wrote a gentleman who had been in the food industry here in the Central Valley forever as an executive. And he reached out to me and said, uh, I'm going to go out on my own and be a consultant. Um, I saw, he's an example. I saw a lot of that. People just saying, you know what, I'm going to be my own boss. And um, so, yes, to answer your question, Marlene, definitely saw that. Yeah, the great resignation. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I'm Marlene. And, handle, and you can handle their insurance for that, right? Because they yes, still need insurance. Yes. I like a new challenge. The gentleman who had the food industry experience, I told him, I said, you know, you're a challenge, so let's go. And uh, it turned out to be interesting. I learned a little bit about what the people do who manage the food production in this area. And it was, uh, it was, a, it was a challenge and it was fun. I enjoyed it. So how is business these days in California? Is there any big challenges with all the fun stuff going on? You know, both sides of the coin. Business is good. Uh, people are working. People are moving. The economy's back. And as you know, California has one of the best economies in the world as a state. There are challenges. I hear about it constantly. Hey, it's tough to do business here. I got a lot of regulations. I got a lot of taxes. So I see both sides of it. But what I notice, the guys who are successful, they seem to just make a go of it regardless. Um, and that gets down to some of the insurance, like the workers' comp insurance. You know, people, some people just buy it and say it's here if my employees get hurt. Other people say, I get it. I don't want my employees to get hurt. I want them to stay safe. I don't want to be bogged down in claims. And they really get involved with their employees and they create a community and they don't have claims and they pay a lot less in insurance. So uh, California is still rocking and rolling, especially out here in the Central Valley and the Bay Area. So question for you, say you have a company that everybody was in the office before COVID. Now everybody works from home and they're not coming back. How does that change your workers' comp? Good question. I don't do a lot of that because I do a lot of contractors, a lot of restaurants and whatnot. So most of, my client, most of my clients have employees there. But for the professional side of things, uh, working from home can lead to claims. You know, you might be out in the trampoline with your son during an 11 o'clock <laughs> meeting. Not that I've ever done that. But uh, <laughs> people are going to take advantage of that home time, as you mentioned earlier, the dogs and their family and whatnot. So insurance companies are aware of that. And there's actually a questionnaire on workers' comp do your employees work from home because they know they're likely to get hurt and take it out on the insurance company or the small business owner together. So basically keep your workers comp going. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> keep your workers comp going. Yeah. That's a personal question. I take it. <laughs> Not at all. No, I'm just saying, keep it going. I mean, it's like years and years and years ago when I was in San Diego and I, the mortgage companies never had it. It was like the ridiculous thing and no one paid for it. And then when I moved up here, definitely I got it for our company because it's, I don't want the, the cost is so minimal compared to what could happen. Right. Right. And I found in times when uh, the economy is better and people are working, you tend to have less claims. It's when the economy turns down and people start showing up on workers comp claims. It's kind of human nature, if you will. 
which gets back to a few things. You know, the, the people who don't have the uh, claims, they tend to be involved with their employees. Instead of just buying workers' comp and saying, there it is, if you got an accident, they actually actively engage with their employees and say, hey, is there anything wrong? Is this a safe environment? How are you driving? Marlene and I talked about driving is a big factor, uh, not only in workers' comp, but also small business insurance. It can really, uh, can really lead to some challenges out there. Yeah, don't run with scissors, those kind of things. There you go. <laughs> Mom's <laughs> advice, right, Ed? <laughs> yeah, all that stuff you learned at yeah. home that you don't take to work. So business insurance, um, John, you were talking about your challenge, uh, your your latest uh, client that was a challenge because he, had, he was going into a different type of field for you. Um, talk about a little bit about groups because groups are, I think, a very interesting thing within the insurance industry. Yeah, we talked about that earlier, Marlene. Uh, you asked me, you know, who do I recommend people buy from? And I say some people want to buy local, but some people want to buy from the best agent they can. And that might not necessarily be local. And that could be a group, for example. I deal with a lot of propane uh, dealers in California, and not every agent understands their business. Not every agent can talk to the underwriters about it. So if you get an agent who can put you with like-minded carriers and like-minded people, uh, that's a good positive. Uh, captives are pretty strong here in the Modesto area too. And those are groups. Those are groups of like-minded individuals. And it's not just the business owner, it's the underwriter on the other side and the agent. Yeah, that's, that's, and that's primarily, I think what a lot of small businesses don't understand. It isn't just the agent, it's the carrier as well. Yes, it's definitely my job is to relate to both sides. I mean, I take what the uh, uh, insurance company has and I put it in front of the uh, customer and then I take the customer's information. And I walk it back to the insurance company and I work for both of them, really. I get I always tell my clients I get paid by you. Technically, my check comes from the insurance company. But if you're not buying from me, you know, I don't have anything. I'm not going to get paid. So my job is to, is to make it work on both sides. It's definitely a relationship on both sides. How many ways are there to make money? Um, as our host, Ed Parco says, uh, make California golden again. That's that's our number one way. And it starts with business, um, especially small business and businesses. Insurance is something you got to have so bonds, liability, workers, comp, health, life, all of it. And you need someone you can trust. So that's what we've got some advice today from one of our favorite uh, commercial lines insurance agents. And that's. Um, John Tyson, commercial insurance agent with Omega Pacific Insurance. Real estate and mortgage questions. Well, that's always our host, Ed Parco, uh, mortgage guru and president of Lending for Living. You can reach out to them both. And when we come back, how do you know if you have the best insurance rates? Well, we'll find out. So stay right there. Our new reverse mortgage product limits can change the way you live out the rest of your life. This is Real Estate Jerky on Power Talk 1360 KFIV. I'm Marlene Champlin, sidekick to our amazing host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran, mortgage guru, and president of Lending for Living. Um, and uh, Ed just informed me that we have some new groovy tool. You can text JERKY to 33777. That's 33777 JERKY. And then- And you'll find you know, out more stuff about us. Yeah, Ed, especially. <laughs> no, he, it's all about you, Marlene. I have a whole article about just about, about you and your past. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't know. Enough Squadola. about us. Let's get to John. <laughs> John. So we're talking to John Tyson, commercial insurance agent with Omega Pacific Insurance. And John, we were talking about rates and how to know if you have the best insurance rates. And, you know, one of the things I love about what you do as a broker is that you shop all the rates as opposed to. You know, um, years and years ago when I started out, I had friends that uh, were in um, the captives. Uh, or what, they're not just captives, really. They're uh, like farmers in State Farm, and they're basically a one-stop shop. But that's what they are. And so if you've got something kind of weird or you need errors and emissions or you need something odd as a small business owner, and most of us do have some little oddities, I love that a bro as a broker, you do that. So talk to me about that talk to us and, and write. Yeah. Thank you, Marlene, for asking that question. So as a broker, I deal with multiple insurance companies from Traveler to Liberty Mutual uh, to Mercury on the auto insurance side to a whole bunch on the workers comp side. My job is to have relationships with these companies that they will give me their best quote each time. 
and you got to work it. You got to work these guys, but you got to do it in a way that they'll come back to you. So that's what I like doing for these, uh, for the clients of mine is I, I get their information and I shop it out to multiple companies each year and we get the best rates. And after a while, you kind of know who's the good player and who likes what and, and how they're going to work it out. And then you present it. I like to present it in front of my clients and show them, Hey, look, I've got five different quotes here. You want to talk about it? Some say, nah, you know, I, I, you got me, just give me, give me the best price. And some say, no, nah, I don't want the best price necessarily. I want the, I want the service. I want, I want the, I want the 24 seven, uh, English uh, or doctor, doctor or nurse on call in English and Spanish for my restaurant stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, you got to shop it out. You got to have a, as an agent, I definitely have to shop it out. It's kind of the same thing we do being a broker, being yeah. a broker. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. important. You never have to say no. That's true. <laughs> Mar oh, did you want me to keep talking, Marlene? Because you're very quiet right now. All right. So you're talking about what to do. And I, I see on here, Marlene always gives me little things to read out and look at things. How important it to, I mean, I, you know, we always know you're supposed to hire well and train well, right? Yeah. So hire, hire slow, fire fast, I guess is the old phrase. Unless you're in the, unless you're in government, then it's hire really slow and never <laughs> fire them because you can never get rid of them. So how do how do you make sure that you hire the right people in the training? Because I know on our side we have these different things we have to research people and make sure they don't have certain things um, for our industries. Is so how do you do this to make sure you get the best rates? Yeah, well, how, okay, great. How that plays into the insurance side is, uh, you know, if you're going to hire well. You get a, how do you do that? I guess from the insurance side, I'm not an expert on that, but I would, uh, I would advise people to just, uh, know what you want and communicate it to who comes in the door and don't be in a rush. I, I hear that a lot. You know, I had to hire this guy or I had to hire this gal and cause I needed a body and then it doesn't work out. Uh, but it does affect your rates. If you got a good employee in there and you're a good employer, you're going to have good rates. It's just this, this statistics prove it out over the years. And then you need to get in a few other things. You need to get into some, um, if you want me, I can talk about auto and behavior and how that's affecting people. Um, we have you here. So okay, well. let's go. Well, Marlene and I were talking about auto rates. Uh, you, you need to get in front of your people if they're driving, especially contractors driving to the Bay Area. Get in front of them once or twice a year and talk about cell phone usage, talk about the speed limit, talk about securing your loads. It's just a good reminder because you never know what goes through somebody's mind. And if you give them that reminder, that sits in the back of their mind every now and then. I just tell Marlene, I've seen some contractors coming back from the Altamont at night and having some accidents. And next thing you know, their, their rates are through the roof and their best employees in the hospital. So uh, behavior is big in this game. Get in front of your employees uh, as far as their auto driving habits. Same thing with work. Uh, just sit down and talk with them every now and then. Um, I could go on to uh, liability. Uh, the insurance industry has people inspecting businesses every single day all over the Valley, all over the Bay Area, all over California. These guys and gals do this every day. They're in, you know, radio boost, mortgage companies, doctor's offices, lumber yards, contractor yards, they're all over. So listen to them, take their advice. They're there to help you out. And that does sound a little bit like a plug, but these guys know what they're doing. They and gals, they, they look for electrical problems, which are big nowadays uh, with all the fires we've had electrical in a house or a building is big. Uh, I've seen that and I've seen time out. No, you're supposed you're to finish listening your to oh, finish your yeah. song, and then she'll cut you off. <laughs> that's right. uh, well, that's okay. Since you stopped, you're listening to Real Estate Turkey here on Power Talk 1360 KFIV, and our guest yeah. is John Tyson, Commercial Lines Insurance Agent with Omega Pacific Insurance. You can reach out to John at 209-338-5500. That's 209-338-5500 uh, or visit trustomega.com. Uh, and we also are listening, of course, as always, to our amazing host, Ed Parco, at mortgage guru and president of Lending for Living. You can reach out to Ed at 209-404-1915. That's 209-404-1915 or visit lendingforliving.com. Um, I love, you know, insurance, John, you, you and I used to tease about it and say it's a big gambling game. They're, you're betting you will and they're betting you won't. Right. So the best way to keep your rates down is don't, right? <laughs> well, yeah, don't use it. I, I do hear that. And I feel bad don't. when people say, hey, I, I don't want to file a claim. I'm like, look, that's what it's there for. But manage your business, take care of your property, take <laughs> care of your people. And the insurance is there for the big ones. And you know what? We've had a lot of fires in the hills in the last few years, as we all know. And the insurance has paid out a ton on that. So it's there when you need it. But uh, I think the attitude is it's there when I need it, but I'll take care of my own stuff for the most part. And I'll, I'll be safe. 
those are the guys who are doing pretty well. The small business owners who seem to do really well. I like what you were saying though, about inspectors, you know, the insurance inspectors, instead of running and hiding and, and not talking to them, they want, they want to see you succeed. I mean, that's their, that's their job is not to go out there and inspect somebody and shut them. They want the premium. Yes, definitely. I mean, this is, this is business. This is American business. I am visited often by insurance companies looking for clients all the time. They're mm. looking for the premiums. They're looking for, you know, the revenue they're investing it and they're making money. So it comes back to the small business owner. Are you a good investment for this insurance company? And these inspectors are out there to do their job. I've seen local businesses here that have had issues with, I'll go back to the electrical. I'll go back to uh, uh, wires going through a wall. You know, somebody plugged in, they didn't wire the building. They just stuck an extension cord through a wall. Uh, I'll never forget that one. And I won't mention any names, but uh, I saw that one day and the inspector was all over that thing. It's like, yeah, you can't do that. They're, they're there to don't keep look you under safe. the table. Yeah. You know, yeah. Don't look under the table. Oftentimes uh, buildings, a million dollar building can have a $10,000 premium on it. So it's, it's a, it's a trade-off and the inspector's there to help you out. How often should you have your insurance looked at? You mean from a shop out? Yeah, well, just like if you have it now, should you know, how often do you, I mean, every year, um, if you've been with the same company for a while, the same people, should you go out and shop, you know, have somebody like you look at it? Yeah, good question. It's not really set in stone. Uh, you got to keep your eyes on the market, but I, I kind of go on average every three years. Things change. Companies change their appetites. Business environment changes. Uh, so every three years on average, you know, make sure your agent isn't falling asleep at the wheel is always a good idea or your, your state farm rep, whoever they are, um, just, just put them, put them to the test about every three years. Let's not go there. It is work <laughs> as you know, too, no, 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 let's side. not pick on different companies. <laughs> All right. I, we sorry. like to have everybody on our show. We do. And it's not about, and, and, and John, you said it really well right there. It isn't about the co- things change companies. Um, you know, wh- as you and I have talked in the past, John, I mean, there was years ago where I did marketing in-house for an insurance agency for a number of years. And uh, we had a moment in time where Fireman's Fund wanted every trucking insured we could bring them. And, you know, is that the same today? No, no, N-O, you know, so that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that your agent was a slacker or things change. Things change. Yeah. And when you're dealing with a com- a care, a company that has a one is a single carrier, it can be a problem for you. So you should, you should shop it out. It can be tough. It, it, I, I worked for a single carrier for a while. It can be tough because you spend your time as the agent making a relationship, you write the guy and the next year you get the, Hey, do not, you know, we're not, we're, th- this client's gone. We don't want him anymore. And you're like, okay. On the broker side, you definitely have more options, but you have to maintain more relationships and you have to know uh, know what these carriers are looking for. So both sides have their pluses and minuses. But being a broker, as Ed was shaking his head, is a good way to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, you have access to people who want business. And like for us, we only deal with wholesalers and they want certain business and we know where to send the right business. And I'm sure you do the same thing. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, because it's important. I mean, insurance is, is you know one of the biggest costs that you can have in a company, right? Depending on what your company is, especially if you're a contractor, right? Because their workers comp is going to be compared to other, th- like my business, my worker comp, nothing compared to a contractor. So you need to shop that and make sure that the right people are working that for you, whatever it is. Right, right. Yeah, the contractors are paying probably up to, you know, 20 times higher than say your rate would be for an employee. And uh, yeah, so when we wrap this, as we wrap this up though, would you say, John, that COVID, as far as right now, um, the fires have had more of a effect than COVID has on rates, insurance rates. You know, I have a restaurant in Sonora, California, and I went out to 20 carriers. I got one quote. And that mm. wasn't the same 10 years ago. I could, and this is one of my best clients, and he has restaurants all over this area, he and his wife. And I have I have quotes all over for here, but up in Sonora, it is in the high part of Sonora. I'm down to one quote right now or one company wants it. So the fires have been big in Northern California uh, for, as we all know, they've been big, but the insurance is tough, tough for small businesses up there right now for property wise. Yeah. But, I mean, it's the same issue in Southern California when you back up against some type of wilderness, because there's a lot of that. People don't realize that the high fire areas, no matter where it is, is hot, really tough in California, especially as we keep going through these droughts Yeah, and we won't get into the why we <laughs> don't store more water and all that fun stuff. 
it's going to be 92 degrees next week. So look out. <laughs> yeah. They're already writing executive orders, not to water. So yeah. Why are you pointing at me, Marley? Cause we got to go. All right. Well, you, you take us out on three. Uh, no, you take us out. Thank you very much, John. <laughs> Thank you, Marlene, for having me. Ed, you too. All right. For, no, for actually, sure. Marlene, you take us out on, on segment three. I take us out on segment four. Thanks, Business John, for coming on. It says, thank you very much for sharing all the great commercial. I, I, Mike, take it out. I, I, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much for sharing all this great commercial insurance information and tips. I give myself a seat. Yeah. <laughs> And batter more. John, is there anything else before you go? That was me and Marlene did that. Uh, Ed, thank you very much. Um, John, thanks for being here today. We really appreciate you sharing all this information about commercial insurance information and tips and what we can do for businesses. My pleasure, Ed. Marlene, thanks for having me on. Look forward to hearing you on the show. <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, business insurance show. has its very own job, and that's to protect you and everything your business is and can be in the future. And for that, you need a great commercial insurance agent and company. Thank you so much, John Tyson, commercial insurance agent with Omega Pacific Insurance. You can reach out to John at 209-338-5500 or at trustomega.com. Need help with real estate or mortgages? Dial our host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran and president of Lending for Living at 209-404-1915. That's 209-404-1915. Or there's a fancy new texting thing. You text double three, that's three, three, and three sevens. So three, three, seven, seven, seven. Text jerky. And you text that. jerky. And, and then you'll get Ed. Um, <laughs> so when we come back, we're going to talk more about business insurance and real estate, of course. So don't go away. You can change the way you live out the rest of your life with our new reverse mortgage products from Lending for Living. Our loan limits are the highest available. Call us today at 209-846-9270 or visit LendingForLiving.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Turkey here on Power Talk 1360 KFIV, where we always give you something to chew on. I'm Marlene Champlin, sidekick to our amazing host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran and president of Lending for Living. Ed, what? business insurance. We were talking about brokers and stuff. And I think that um, of all of our guests that we've probably ever had on, you probably could relate most with John on that level yes. of being able to shop always the best thing for your client, no matter what, and right. always being able to say yes, somehow, some way, both you and John, John with business insurance and you with uh, mortgages, you guys get it done, period. We do the best we can, right? I mean, we get it done. You say we get it done. And I want to thank I you for always typing, saying all this great stuff about me, because one of the biggest problems that everybody has is we never talk about ourselves. But I want to say one thing before I get into that. Marlene, thanks for everything you do here. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Why are you laughing? It is. Oh, we, we, you, I got you on there. So, you, can't, you can't run away. Because I'm so naughty. Because I'm so yeah. naughty about, I mean, it, it's like but, John said, wow, you're being really, and John is one of my favorites. I have known John for many years um, and he got, so Ed, you say about talking about ourselves and our past and all that. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I have all brothers and, uh, and and they're Portuguese men brothers. So mean and Henri is our middle name. We were brutal growing up. So nobody can haze other guys like, and you know it too, Ed. So, so to give it a break, it might feel like he's always picking on me, but the, the truth is. <laughs> you dish it out I'm as always, much as I give I'm it. I'm always picking on you guys. And John, always hear her. Yeah. and John, talk, I know because I learned like, like those Queensland dogs we had around the cattle, you got to sneak up, man, or they kick the shit out of you. So yeah. <laughs> I guess you can't really say that on air, but okay. Oh, they kick oops. the brain oh, out of you. They kick the beef out. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so I've learned to be really, really sneaky like that. And so I know John Tyson. Yeah. Um, I, and I met him like three or four years ago when he was at a different rotary and he'd come to the crab feed that John, that uh, Mark Henry put on. Right? Yes. The one the, well, I actually, um, you've known uh, him forever. So. I have. And, and he brought it up. That's why I think his intro, he was so surprised, but what I, but, uh, that I was so nice, <laughs> but well, the reality is John is super good. He is an amazing in a commercial lines and agent. I mean, cause it's hard. Some small businesses, you know, your gross receipts might not dictate 
what your premium should be. And um, because because you have you're such a specialty, and I've seen John go right down to the wire. He just shop and shop and shop and take it to every good carrier, every relationship to get it done for somebody. And I find that you are a, of the similar in mortgages, Ed. You do the same thing. I mean, because I've brought you people that weren't that easy to get it done, and you got it done. And again, it depends on the marketplace, right? So, mm-hmm. like right now for you, refi. Eh, because the rates are so crazy. Right. right but now, the only right? thing that works right now for refis is cash out refinances. Because if you have a lot of debt, which a lot of people has created, but they didn't do a refinance to pay it off over the last couple of years, is still a, a good thing to look at because you can still save a lot of money. That's the only refinances that should be done right now. So really? if you do any, yeah. Yeah. Because you can still save thousands of dollars a month right. if you pay off some of that against debt. a low, low and then the you, high interest debt. Right. Yeah. And then you put a plan together to half that you put back on your mortgage and you can pay that down in you know 16 years, which it makes a huge difference. So it doesn't really matter what the rate is because the plan that we put together. Um, right. Yeah. No, so this is what I mean. You you you've got all these ideas, you know, mm-hmm. when somebody so you know, I like to tell people, um, and in the insurance, especially if there's more than one way to do stuff and do it right. And you just need somebody with a lot of experience and a lot of really solid relationships out within their industry. And, and that and they makes think the- outside the box. They think yes. outside the box. They don't just like, okay, well, this is, this is going to take a lot of time. So I'm not going to work on it. I find yeah. the more time you put into it and help people, the more they come back to you because you help them. Yes, I can make my life a lot easier and my staff if there's certain loans we didn't do or work on or get them done. But then those people remind, remember you because what you did for them, right? And so that's what's important. You're listening clients. to Real Estate Jerky here on Power Talk 1360 KFIV with our host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran, mortgage expert, and president of Lending for Living. If you've got questions for Ed, you can reach out by dialing 209-404-1915. That's 209-404-1915 or at lendingforliving.com, which is a cool little website and there's everything there. You can also email us um, with comments, questions, suggestions for guests. We're always open to that at radio at realestatejerky.com. Um, so, and then the other thing that's going on right now, Ed, that I think um, it, it, people don't like to talk about it, but I think in the current economy, um, it's reverse mortgages and somebody who thought they had their retirement planned out perfectly and then health reasons or this current inflation and economy has changed up their plan. So they I, may I, have done all the right things, but now they're or, in a bind. Right. Or they don't, you know, a lot of them have retirement, but if they take it out now because they've, you know, some of it's went down certain issues, they, they might not get as much in 10 years from now or, you know, because most people start in their retirement at 65 and they start drawing. They don't want to take it all. Right. Some people push it off to as far as they can to where they have to make the withdrawals. Well, I'm finding right now, a lot of people with the inflation and how much it's costing. I mean, I filled up my truck. Okay. I can take it back. I halfway filled up my truck the other day and it was 125 bucks and shut off. I couldn't fill it up. That's a problem. If that's a problem for me and I don't drive much, can you imagine somebody who is on a fixed income and they're trying to fill up their car and it's costing them 150 bucks, what used to cost them $60. And they, and that, and so I was talking, I think our, our show before, cause I had some people call me last weekend about our show. And we didn't really talk about reverse mortgage. I just said a couple of things like, you know, with the inflation that's going on right now and what's happening, a lot of people are not, it's getting harder to make it on their fixed income. And so a lot of them are looking for other ways to fix that. And I ran, a guy called me and he was, his issue is he wants to retire. He's 65, but, and he makes $117,000 a year, but he works like ridiculous hours, four days with 10 hours and he's old and he wants to retire. But with the current state, he can't do that. But if you do a so he asked me, can we look at a reverse mortgage? So I did it and it allows him to have that equity line there if he needs it over the next so many years to ha- make his life a lot easier. Plus he doesn't have a house payment anymore. Right, so, right. So right. It, it's not for everybody. And, but the one thing I want to say, this is not the 1960s one. This is a, or the one that everybody hears, oh, did you hear this? So what's happened to so-and-so 20 years ago on these? They've totally changed. They're, they protect you. Yes, you add the interest onto your loan over the time that you don't make those payments and that goes up. But most people in your family don't want your house. They want you to have a great life. Yeah, and be happy and be able to come and visit grandma and grandpa or mom and dad or come to the house that they grew up in. 
you know, and, and, yeah. and be yeah. able to just have, I mean, it is a stable thing. It, it is, as we all know, I mean, there's enough statistics that prove home ownership is stability. Yeah. Uh, there's pr entire programs. Habitat for Humanity is based on that. Taking people in, uh, you know, people who are impoverished normally would not be able to ever afford working poor. They're working, they have an income, they can live, but they can't afford to buy a house. Um, has proven that if you can do that, it's generationally change, life changing, changes generations. Right. And, and the issue now is before there was such a program that was, you couldn't get enough out of your house if your house was worth a lot of money, which a lot of houses are worth a lot of money now. Um, now we have these portfolio programs that do that allow you to get a lot more money out. I'm talking ridiculous. For reverse money. mortgages. Yeah, yes. reverse mortgages. Yes. And so you can get like, yeah, yeah. it's crazy at million dollars. I had a guy out. who 1.3 was a value and he got almost 800,000 out to make sure that he can live the rest of his life any way he wants to with that amount of money, because, you know, you, you, it, it's there for you to do whatever it's your house. I know you paid it off, but maybe you look at if you sold the thing, you, some people have capital gains. You're going to go rent. Did you know there's a one bedroom, one bath in Lathrop? It's an apartment complex for 2,200 a month. Yes. 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 And there's, and that's how bad rents are, right? Rents are going through the roof well, and they're not going to stop. Not one bad if you're the rental, if you're no. the landlord. Well, right? a lot of people don't realize one in four single family homes right now is being built to rent only. That's huge. That's housing tracks that are just being built just to rent. And that's how crazy the rents are going to keep going up, just like the values of homes. You know, we're not going to see this bubble everybody keeps talking about. But just like everything, pop, there's our bubble. It's into the it's into the show. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? It's well, not into the show? Nope. I just got word from our uh, iHeart engineer, Mike Murray. He's he's yeah. so good at whispering in our ear. I didn't that we're it. actually going to fill the gap between now and the upcoming NC2A Final Four games. We are? <laughs> yeah. Aren't we going to go and then come back? No? no. So, well, yes, kind of like that. So how about you wrap up kind of like usual, okay. and then we come back and we talk about... Um, Stuff that we can't talk about on real estate jerky normally? Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. We talk about everything on real estate jerky. <laughs> All right. Yes, it's true. We're at the end of our show. Truly the fastest hour of our week. However, today we get an extra half hour, so we'll be coming right back, so don't go anywhere. Thank you for tuning in. I want to thank our guest, John Tyson, commercial insurance agent with Omega Pacific Insurance. Reach out to John at 209-338-5500. That's 338-5500. Or vis visit trustomega.com. If you miss any of today's show, you can catch us via our podcast that it gets put out there on Monday. You can find that on iHeart app or anywhere you find your favorite podcast. Um, we'll be visiting with more of our candidates for Congress, Senate, and Assembly coming up. We have Judge Stephen Bailey, candidate for state, was that state Senate District 4. He will be joining us. We've got a special show planned for Easter weekend. We do. And then the American Graffiti Festival is coming, and that's going to be fun because we always have fun with those chairs. Um, North Modesto Kiwanis, uh, Brent Burnside, and Charlie Christensen. And remember, stay calm out there. We, we're proud to live in this land of opportunity. We can still build personal wealth through home ownership. We'll keep bringing you something to chew on here at Real Estate Jerky, broadcasting Saturdays at noon and Sundays at 10 a.m. You can always find us, like I said, via podcast, anywhere you find your podcast apps. Just search Real Estate Jerky and you'll find us. Marlene, I know I'll see you next week, but we still have another half hour. Yeah, you just hang out for three minutes and we'll come back and we're going to talk about sex. Oh, no, not again. Yeah, Sounds like the Mike Douglas show we did. Anyway, yeah. we'll be right back. <laughs> well, we're still here. They didn't throw us off. So, so don't go away. We're going to talk about sex. <laughs> When you are in the home buying market, start with your FICO score. The best way to improve your FICO score is to keep your credit card balances below 50% of your limits. Yes, you are listening to Real Estate Jerkies. NC2A Final Four pregame soiree. And I'm Marlene Champlin, sidekick to our amazing host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran, mortgage guru, and president of Lending for Living. And as promised, we're going to talk about sex and the NC2A. How about it, Ed? <laughs> Might as well. We got nothing else to do. It is Saturday. <laughs> it's Saturday. And we don't play basketball. Have you ever, ever played? Yeah, played you played kid. basketball? Yeah. Did you really? I played in junior high. And then when I got to high school, I was too short. 
Oh, okay. Cause I was going to say, I didn't yeah. grow until my senior year. Yeah. yeah. Cause, um, yeah. yeah, I, yeah, I played I basketball the- like on the driveway. Um, you know, but so when did you play it? I, I played all over. All over forward, yeah, guard, forward, yeah, like, yeah, everything. Yeah. Yeah. I was a timer. Cause I, I was a timer for our basketball in junior high. No, basketball. no, uh-uh. I was, I was, yeah, no, that was going to be allowed. Are you kidding me? Um, yeah. Uh, actually I was a cheerleader. I don't want my friend Chrissy to hear this when we were in junior high, but that was football. Um, I guess some basketball, but mostly I was a timer. That was my thing, but yes, uh, all those brothers, I did play some basketball, but not really. And so I never really got into it. And then, although I did have, a really good friend in high school who ended up playing pro ball. He played for Portland and then he played European ball, uh, Pete Verhoeven. Hmm. Um, yeah. When my folks moved up to Oregon, anyway, he used to go visit my, my family was became his family while he was uh, playing there. But that was it. That was, yeah. I mean, so I mean, I so- enjoyed it, but it wasn't enough for me to keep going. You know, it was not my thing. I enjoyed it running and soccer kind of stuff football was just too ridiculous how hot it was here in the valley so, there's no <laughs> so i want to talk that. about sex again well um, i think what you're talking about is the fact that ncaa has been taken over by the fact that you know transgender they've made it be about sex though yeah, yeah. i mean they've made, it be, yeah. they've made it be about sex again again i don't know why but it's been going on for quite a while i mean we we act like right now this is brand new but it's been going on in the NC2A for quite a while. And, and my question is, why is it even happening? I mean, we have like 2010, there was a basketball player um, who ended up playing on, uh, it was, she, she actually did the opposite. After she was finished playing basketball, women's came out as a trans man. Yeah. Um, after, but after yeah but that's i mean most people don't have a problem if you go that way it's when you're a man going to you know compete against women right well that's the big upset right now because of leah thomas right 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 and i i don't understand how they came up with the 34 months of hormone treatment then you can actually play on that play in that sport did you know that it's like how did they come yes. up with that number well, and that, aren't you that's out of what, high, aren't you out of college by then? <laughs> well, and well, you've got 23 and 24 year old players. Exactly. It's yes. Aren't you out? No, obviously. Obviously not. Obviously not. And then the other thing that, um, you know, that prompted me when I read about that hormone replacement therapy, which by the way, if you're just a menopausal woman around these parts, and if any doctors listening to this and would like to um, correct me, I would love it if you would. You play hell trying to get any kind of very customized HRT. You you can't you can't do it. But I guess HRT if I wanted to, uh, hormone replacement therapy. Thank you for the rest of us. Uh, you're welcome. Well, that's going to be it's become very top of mind. I'm sure most people who've been following all this NC2A because you don't get like that unless you're taking buttloads of hormones. Oh, by the way, you really are listening to Real Estate Jerky here on Power Talk 1360 KFIV with our host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran, mortgage expert, and president of Lending for Living. Um, And yes, the reason we're talking about the NC2A is because your final four games are coming up and there was 30 minutes that uh, needed to be filled and we agreed to fill it because we thought we had something to say and we do. So at my Ed, you asked well, if I knew I don't about know if the hormone. Agree with what we have to say, but you know, we just we just thought we would kind of bring up the NCAA, what's going on right now, and talk about a few things. And um, yeah, and how does it affect um, us? How does it affect you as down at the homeowner level? How does it affect the economy? I mean, all this stuff it, has an effect. It all has know, an effect. I don't know if NCAA affects any of that, but it does. It does make up for us talking about things. Right. Um, Because it's funny. I've seen so many posts now since that swimmer, the um, transgender swimmer, you know, destroyed the women's. I think he was 580 something on the men's how far down. And now he's, you know, someone said mediocre men are ruining it for women. Stealing the dreams of women. Yeah. yeah, And and I mean, it was all I could do not to post. So what's new? (laughs) Well, I mean, and what I think they should do is I don't, you know, everybody needs to have their group. So why don't they make the transgender transgender division, right? And have, 
if you're going through that process, that's your, you know, just like that pair, you know, the different Olympics and the different things. Why don't they have that? I don't understand well, that why was can- uh, one of the swimmers that one of the collegiate swimmers actually did uh, mention that and say, you know, why do you have to compete in, in this league? And she, and she made a brilliant comparison um, about comparing Olympians to Paralympians, um, comparing junior high to college. You don't, you know, even though you might have the most incredibly talented high school um, player, rarely do they push them up immediately. I mean, it happens, but usually that's, it's rare. And in this case, what, um, or do we look at this at like, it's, it's going to up the game or change the game completely uh, because there's that element. I've heard the argument that, well, those women are just going to have to step up. So over time, does that, would that happen? Well, my Will- question is if he, if they can take hormone replacement therapy, I guess they should be able to take testosterone. Yes, but here's the thing. Uh, you what know is what I mean? N- it's like that's yeah, but what is the NC2A? What are they supposed to be? Do you know what NC what it is at NC2? NASA Collegiate you know Association or something? It's an intercollegiate, right? And they're supposed to have the best interest, best interest, lifelong concern for collegiate players. So tell me how hormone replacement therapy, and you don't get that way unless you're taking boatloads of it is best for a collegiate player lifelong not are you talking about the right. transgender are you talking about other i people? mean all of them transgender it isn't just a matter of he's playing basketball with a skirt on or she's swimming with a full speedo instead of briefs that's not what the difference is the difference is they're taking major hormones one way or the other they're either taking suppression to suppress their right. testosterone or they're taking enhancement. It's one of the, it's, they're, they're not you that couldn't way. Take, I thought you weren't supposed to be able to take those type of things while you're competing. Exactly. But they is are that your point. Is that your, point? that's my point. And yeah, how is that? Could, I knew I'd wake up eventually. So. <laughs> well, but I mean, how does that, how is that in the collegiate NC2A standards? So I don't so, have a clue, but I mean, that's my, that's my question. Yeah. Well, I just don't, I think they need to create their own division for this and, and, and not allow men to compete in women's sports. Right. There's always been that issue. And I, you know, I know, I know that, I know, but then we're back to the whole women competing in men's. Well, that's okay. If you're good enough as a woman to compete in a men's then go for it, you know, but I, I understand like wrestling, let's put it in high school wrestling. There's not enough women. There's not enough women in high school wrestling. Like there should be. So they wrestle guys. And if you, you know, so for a guy, if you lose to the girl, you're a weakling, right? But if you pin her and win, then it's like you've taken advantage. I mean, you know what I mean? It's just like a double standard, which mm-hmm. can have an issue for the guy competing. I think you should compete in your class, women against women and men against men, period. Right? So what in the How world is born? going on? What is going on? So this is Real Estate Jerky and I'm Marlene Champlin, sidekick to you, my brother in business, Ed Parco, MBA veteran, mortgage guru, and president of Lending for Living. So what can you do to create your own peace and tranquility um, in the middle of all this? Uh, buy a home. And in today's market, you're going to need help with that. So dial our host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran and president of Lending for Living at 209-404-1915. That's 209-404-1915. Are we going to talk more about sex when we come back? We might, or we might really talk about NC2A basketball and real estate, of course. So don't go away. Our new reverse mortgage product limits can change the way you live out the rest of your life. Yes. You are listening to Real Estate Jerkies, NC2A Final Four pregame soiree. And I'm Marlene Champlin, sidekick to our amazing host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran, mortgage guru, and president of Lending for Living. And uh, they asked Ed and I to fill in for this pregame, pregame NC2A basketball show. And uh, we decided we would, and we would talk about sex. Right, Ed? Well, I'm just surprised <laughs> they had us back after that NFL one we did. Fiasco. <laughs> I know. We warned them. I know. I, 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 
we have no rules when we don't do any when we do these extra stuff you know like when we took over my Douglas show is a big stinking deal I mean I knew this March Madness I mean I knew this and all all this I I I had a clue and um and I grew up with basketball hoop in our hanging off of uh actually for us it was the barn it wasn't the garage because we didn't have didn't everybody have a basketball hoop Uh, yeah 20 some million so it's such a big deal. Dick Sporting Goods is one of them. There are many. But Dick Sporting Goods has an entire section in their website about picking the right hoop for your home. There's many, all different kinds of mounts. Um, picking the right ball. I mean, it, it, it's a lot. It's cool. It was actually very cool. And um, yes, I had to research Did that. Did you know so. there's even a floor printer to print your court? Did you no. know that? You could do no. your own logo on your court. It's called the, so I did a um, inner Edison. And I interviewed a guy who brought the wall printer to the United States from some other place. And he's done all these different patents. Well, now they created one for the floor and you can print like a rug on a concrete floor or you can print whatever. Well, the big thing they use it for is putting where companies have basketball courts outside. They put their logo in it and you can do the same nice. thing at your house. You could do the same thing. I'm like, that is amazing. So if anybody needs a, a business that they want to start, always looking there's nobody in our area who has that territory so go get it oh my there gosh you go, you've got the connection for the guy yeah just the, yeah I, I had him on internet so we haven't posted I, that I, one i'm actually interested in yes knowing you, I, that. yes from I'm an down. advertising perspective that could be oh dude have amazing. you seen the like have you seen the wall a, a printer you can print a yeah. mural on the wall yeah. and it can go 50 feet high. So you can do outside or inside. It'll stay there for three years. It's so what is it? Crawl up. Now you got me. Now you got me crazy. Look, let's see this. The thing. wallprinter.com. The wallprinter.com. All right. That's right. You know what? It's that, amazing like, who I come across when I do that other podcast. Well, you know what? It's funny you bring that up. I've just got another uh, thing and he'd be good for inner Edison and for her and it's and for here. And it is going to change the way we administrate meds, period and supplements and everything. Do you ever forget to take yours? And take in my, some cases, no, I, I don't have a problem taking my hormone therapy. <laughs> <laughs> well, but a lot of taking meds is about taking it on time, the same time every, I mean, there's a whole, especially if you're doing some kind of replacement thing, thyroid hormones, anything like that. You're, um, anywho, it's yeah, Marcia uh, as, has a, as on our phone, um, what's his, one of the stars it's time to take your medicine. Yes. As directed, as directed, total link care. Uh, they just came out. I've been using it for a couple of years as a prototype Mm -hmm. and you can actually buy this thing. So now you can actually buy it, subscribe to it. And it's, it's most incredible. It dispenses Mm -hmm. your meds. It gives you a reminder. If you're a caregiver or you're a kid of, of, you know, your parents are still, or your and you want to make sure they're taking their meds on time, you can program it. So it sends you a text when they took it, like, and you get a picture of them waving. We, I, we might have pretty... to get this for our dogs. Yeah. Those are dogs oh, that, well, let me tell the, you, that's what the pills um, it has to take. Yeah. Well, I mean, Addison's that's uh-oh. disease on a dog. Just, it's like, oh, I know, you know right. what? They're so but Georgia, they, they well, Georgia is doing right? great. Georgia's doing Georgia. great. Yeah, yeah, they're finally, you know, it takes about 30 days for two dogs to get along. And, um, and I've signed them up to be a service dog. So, you know, Aww. he comes in the office and I'm teaching him a lot of different things, but what a, what a great dog that guy was. Um, it was amazing that we were able to, I found him and he's turned into a great dog. I know so. he loves you. That's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Marcia so, took yeah, a picture of me at the, the cabin last weekend. I'm laying in my chair. I know, I saw it in the chair in the, the recliner with here. George. Yeah. yeah, he's sleeping. I'm sleeping. <laughs> so yeah. cute. It was so cute. It was like great. It was yeah. really good. Um, yeah, that was a good thing. And how did we get from there from NCTA? NCAA. Well, it's just about well, caring. Well, that's because we're, we're caring. We're, we're caring people. We're caring. <laughs> yeah. And I don't even know where I'm at on the clock because I forgot to stop the watch. And so we're, uh, we're halfway almost time for you to like so, take, do a little so break. Yeah, no. We oh, can't we don't say, say that. that I'm sorry. The word. We don't that say that word. Say. We're, We're not fired. going anywhere. We're just going to talk. We're going to get it. fired. We're going to get fired again. Uh, you are listening to real estate again. <laughs> well, you're listening to real estate jerky here on Power Talk 1360 KFIV in the pre pre show NC2A Final Four. I don't even know who's in Villanova. I'm sure did Fresno State make some it? Pa- I don't. Some basketball teams. Kansas. Kansas. Yeah. In Kansas. I mean, you know, I was going to do that research, but this was sort of last minute for me. I I. I, you know, no, it so. wasn't. It was like it was all planned. Yeah, it was all planned. <laughs> right. 
like, oh, I almost said something bad that I would have gotten fired for. Yeah. <gasps> I won't again. say that again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'll just yep, bleep yep, it out. Yep. So when the day comes when I'm finally done doing this, I wonder if people are going to wonder. She got yeah. fired finally. She got, yeah. they, they brought the hook and took her off the stage. They took her off. She got gone. She got gone. She got Remember gone. the gong show? She's out. Oh, God, yes. I loved the gong show. I loved the gong show. Okay, so I don't want to talk about transgender thing anymore. I want to talk about, um, yeah, the, I love that. It's, what did, was it again? I didn't know the H- wall no, hold on, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm sorry. I had no idea that HRT has been around since the 1940s. 40s, yes. Yeah. I, yes. I finally Hormone read your little script. Thank you. There, there you go. Hormone replacement therapy uh, started off to combat the uh, s- from the symptoms of menopause. Right. And, and I'm telling you what I said earlier, uh, please somebody correct me to get customized hormone replacement therapy as a menopausal woman. Trust me, I've been trying to get this done and get it done right. It's almost impossible. So I guess if I wanted to go play what? If I wanted to go bowl on the men's team, maybe I could make it happen. Yeah, somebody sure would can. give me testosterone <laughs> but because you're no, they just thing. have to make you upset and you'd throw that ball down the thing so hard <laughs> and break the damn pin <laughs> when i used to be able to golf, i used to be able, when i used to golf yeah that was a thing man i could drive it screw up my putting like crazy but yeah. it'd be wicked good on the drives <laughs> Yeah, my my goal bowling is to see how fast i can throw that ball down the road <laughs> oh i'll bet you're brutal I'll it's bet you, you know, who was a good bowler. My husband, Alan, yeah. I'm not a great, bowler. I'm not a good bowler. I Alan just know was how to throw that bowler. down there. He yeah. was an amazing bowler. He, I mean, even like hadn't bowled. We would took the kids, the grandkids once he hadn't bowled in like, I don't even know years. <sighs> he bowled like two, 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 sixty, two. I mean, it was nuts. We were just like, huh? <laughs> the grandkids are all like, well, how come well, he knows how to do that? Well, you know, it's not like golf. Golf, if you haven't played in a while, you come out there really bad. So, oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. My and clubs so, have so much dust on them. But yeah, and hormone replacement therapy. And so now here we are today, just like a lot of things. I don't know what it is about us humans. We just can't seem to take a good thing and leave it good. Well, we, we always just, want more. We just and don't get me wrong. If you, I understand identifying differently and having those issues and, and wherever you are. that And that's fine. But let's not... If you're, you know, let's not ruin it for women, period. Women have hard enough time as it is. You know, they're not, I was had another interesting the other day. I was talking to the lady who just won the fitness for um, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, he has all that mm-hmm. universe and stuff. Mm-hmm. And she's in the fitness category where they, they do this huge routine. And her big thing is, is breakdance, but she had broke her tibia the Oof. day before Oof. practicing. Oof. And, and, and she's like, Oof. and I told nobody, I told everybody that it didn't happen so that I could, and so she changed her routine just a little bit so she could do it. And she won again, Oof. this is her third year, but she had a broken tib and, Oof. you know, and did that Painful. and you can't tape it. You can't put a cast. You can't do anything. Uh. They're in high heels, walking, doing this one thing, uh. doing this other stuff. And what I'm getting at is it's just hard enough as it is for women to get big on certain things. We don't need other people taking it away from them. So guys you're here and it and and uh yeah that's why i mean smarty pants and i are whenever they started posting colby bell our friend colby posted that you know another example of mediocre men trying to steal the dream, dreams of of exceptional women and <laughs> like i said i you know what's i don't the jealousy factor is stupid and yeah, the fact it, it just is stupid and I that's just, where you know my from. problem is how <sighs> You know, I just don't get it. You know, why would you, I mean, I understand, Hey, I feel this way. I want to, I want to swim with that's fine. But if you're let's have a whole division, Here, because about- it's not just about the sport, Ed, it's emotional issues that are stemming from these players. And I'm calling you out. You had a brother that performed better than you. And then you couldn't ever lead, you know, do as well as your brother. So you are going to go wreck it for women. I mean, you're dancing How about your this? issues How about out this? on if you're others. Going to do that. You have to go fully that way. Cut it off. And if that's the case, <laughs> I guarantee you, they won't swim. They won't go that. If you have to fully go over to well, that Well, that side. goes along with my theory that if men were losing their, you know, what's as wit as often as women lose their breasts, there, there'd be no more breast cancer. <laughs> well, there's, there's, there's the same issue with prostate. It'd so be done. Yeah. 
right. I think we're getting to the end there. They're telling us we got to get the yeah, heck I out think of we here. We finally are. Yeah. <laughs> Am I supposed to do this whole commercial thing? Or are we just supposed to stay, stay tuned for out. the first game of the final four double header yeah, coming up can. next on? No, you can say you can say you got to go like, you All know, right. wrap up your show and All right. encourage well, people you to know, listen tomorrow at 10 a.m. At 10 a.m. All right. Hey, yes, it's true. We're again. Now we're finally at the end of our show. <laughs> yeah, I know it's been an hour and a half, but I want to thank you for tuning in today. And thanks to our guest, John Tyson, commercial insurance agent with Omega Pacific Insurance. Reach out to John at 209-338-5500. That's 338-5500. Or visit trustomega.com. If you missed any of today's show, you can catch us on our podcast, wherever you find your favorite podcast app or the iHeart app itself via your mobile device. Enjoy the upcoming NCAA Final Four basketball games. Remember, the best way to build personal wealth in the United States is through home ownership. See you next week, Marlene. Yes, thanks, Ed. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. My MLS license number is 235384. And stay tuned for the first game of the Final Four doubleheader coming up next on KFIV 1360 AM.